Awesome. Happy 51 okay. SDS fans. Let me mute this. All right, chat, can you hear us? <clears throat> yes, good, awesome. Okay, so let's move this here. Boom, boom. We'll do that, and we'll be good. Hello. Okay, chat, can you guys see everything? Yes? All right. Aramis, good to see you, by the way. I haven't seen you in, in I think, like three years. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, guys, so we are here today with, uh, we are here today with Brian Birmingham, lead for, uh, for WoW Classic. Uh, he's been, I mean, since, since the beginning, um, you've been on the team since since 2005. It was like halfway through Vanilla. Uh, 2006. 2006. 2006. Yeah. There you go. yeah. About halfway through Vanilla. Yeah. So uh, if you're an old frog, if you've been here for a while, you know Brian. Brian's been on our stream a couple times before. So we're very excited to have Brian back, and uh, we have a lot to talk about. We got Wrath of Lich King in four days. I know it's so exciting. It's coming up like right now. Yeah. It's uh it's something that is very very. Uh, I think this is for a lot of people, for a lot of classic fans. The, this is like the, um, it's it's like the pinnacle of classic WoW, right? It's like the the end of the trilogy for a lot of people. It's like they, they want the original, and then, you know, Cataclysm and and uh, what all Cataclysm brought, changing the whole world, everything like that. That still exists in the retail version of the game. So, uh, it's a very like definitive moment, you know, with uh, with the the Arthur storyline kind of coming to a close, kind of, uh, and and all that. So, yeah, people are excited. I'm I'm glad you got a chance to come join us. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, I know that we don't have a whole lot of time today, so I have a whole bunch of notes and questions that uh, I want to ask. And I know we're not going to get through all of them, but... All right, so let's get jamming. I think yeah. we just get right to it. So Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so um, I know this is uh, something we talked about a lot in the past, uh, talking about, like, no changes and, you know, some changes and this and that. Was there, like, a definitive moment that you guys were like, okay, like, we, we need to account for the times and make some changes in order to, to make the playing experience better for, for people playing the game like now in current year? I don't know if there was a definitive moment. It was more like a gradual evolution. Like we started very much like we wanted to make sure that we were building trust. And we knew that a lot of people were asking for like, we want you to make sure that you bring back everything about Classic that was cool about it. You know, get rid of the Dungeon Finder, get rid of flying, get rid of everything, really bring it back to original you know, vanilla, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that, right? The original version of the game. And so we really wanted to try to make sure we met that commitment, partly to make sure that we weren't, you know, putting on blinders, right? We wanted to remember like, what are really all of the differences between modern World of Warcraft and classic World of Warcraft? And then once we got all the way back there, including like, you know, re-implementing some bugs and putting things back in, in broken states and mm -hmm. on purpose, there was a, a kind of a, a recognition that like, okay, well, this would really, it technically was there, but people didn't know about it. Uh, and if people knew about it today or knew about it then, it would have really ruined things. And they know about it today, so it will ruin things. So it was things like uh, the ectoplasmic resonator is one that sticks in my mind, mm -hmm. right? Where it was like, I don't know if you remember this, but it was from the tier 0 0.5 quest chain. But uh, you were, it was a quest objective, right? You're supposed to like get this item and turn it into somebody, mm -hmm. right? You're not really supposed to like keep it in your bag. It's not a yeah. reward. But it turned out that you could have it in your bags and use it to generate a ton of threat. And we said, okay, like technically this existed. Some people, so very few knew about it and actually remember using it at the time. But it became like a, this would become the way to play. The way to play would right, be like, right. you're a tank, start the tier 0.5 quest line, stop in the middle, carry this thing in your bags forever, and you're the best tank, right? And you have to have this. Right. And we said, okay, this is, this is clearly not what was intended. Clearly we need to break this. Um, and from there, it was kind of a gradual progression. Like, is this really broken? Is there, you know, something else? Uh, the the drums effect in Burning Crusade was something a lot of people asked us to mm -hmm. do something about. They said, can you bring forward the Wrath of the Lich King uh, tinnitus debuff, right? To make sure that, you know, not everybody feels forced right. to use drums. Drums are still good. And so it was all those kinds of things where we were hearing from people, no, we don't really want it to be exactly as it was. We want it to be like really close, really, really close. But like, could you fix this problem? Could you fix that problem? Right. So that's what we've been trying to do. Yeah, and I, and I think it's gone great. I think I think the overall... Uh, sentiment has been has been positive. Like people are always going to have their own opinions on individual things, right? But I, I think it all started with um, 
the the chrono boon in in vanilla at the end of vanilla oh yeah because that's something that, that was I, I think was a huge positive change for the game and i, and I think there's more that could have been done but i i think that kind of like okay now the doors open and then slowly like little things were added like the uh paladins having seal of blood and burning crusade and getting rid of batching and and getting rid of batching but then uh keeping seal twisting in the game because you know adding like the manual thing like we talked about that um, before launch, so yeah, that was tricky. We had to like actually put work in to put it back in. Yeah, yeah and I and I appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, it, there, there's a lot of stuff like that um, that I think that I think has gone really well. And uh, one thing that a lot of people are wondering about is uh, talking about changes and stuff. The the auction house. So I, oh, right. I, I think a lot of people really like how the classic auction house looks and how it how it uh, feels when it's working. But I think a lot of people also have a problem with just it's just so laggy because the volume, right? Like there's there's so many more people on a server. There's so many more people using the auction house constantly than there were back then. H has there been any discussion or thought about uh, like overhauling the auction house in any way to um, basically just make it run smoother, run better? Right. We do. We are very keenly aware of the problems that people have on the auction house, especially on the larger realms and kind of in the way that people use the auction house. It's a lot of the contributing factors. And so we are looking at that. Like currently, we have people trying to deploy new optimizations to it to try to see if they can fix the problems uh, with the current auction house. But you're right that like the modern game has moved on to a different auction house back end, a different auction house mm -hmm. front end, and even like the commodities market. And like all three of those things are different between modern and classic. And so we decided to like a long time ago to bring back the classic auction house and we were kind of happy about it. But you're right, it, it does kind of contribute to some of those uh, negative player behaviors that end up resulting in a lot of lag. It's a lot of that like, posting of single stacks and things yeah. like that. Like, so the the sheer volume of the number of auctions you have to parse through in order to provide like a sorted list is enormous. And that's part of where that, you know, that uh, latency and, and uh, chugginess comes from. So we're trying to find ways to optimize those search results um, and trying to pay attention to like the way people use it too. Yeah, player uh, player. We had some optimizations we developed during Burning Crusade that we you know kind of kept it afloat. And uh, they were kind of focused around the idea that most of the that most of the time was spent people doing scans of the whole list, and we were like, how can we make those scans more efficient? And mm. so we did that. We made improvements there. And then more recently, we were like, oh, it's, it's it's being slow again. What's the problem? And it turns out that there's a difference in behavior recently, where there's like more people like posting and canceling frequently. Like, okay, well now we need to make posting and canceling, you know, uh, faster. Right. But we also have like uh, recently with uh, Wrath of the Lich King included the ability to throttle add-ons separately from uh, the, the primary uh, interface so oh, we can okay. try to control them. So we know that a lot of this uh, activity comes from uh, people who are using auction house add-ons to you know do large batch posts and then large batch cancels and things like that. So we can make sure that they don't take up all the time from people who are using the default UI. But we are talking also about like, should we improve the default UI? We think one of the reasons that contributes to people posting those single stacks is it's not sorted by buyout, or sorted by uh, like unit price. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like like if you used to have a stack of twenty, it's always going to cost twenty times the stack of one, right? And so it's always going to sort to the bottom, correct? Right. But if it's slightly cheaper per item, you probably want it to sort to the top, right? Yeah. And so if we had the, a way for you to sort like that in the default UI, it wouldn't encourage so many people to go to mods. And so we're talking about what we can do to clean up the, unit, the user interface. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. Uh, like trying to find a way to kind of keep it, have the same feel, but then like the sorting and like the other stuff like that where exactly the back end is going to be huge, I think. And every now and then, yeah, people will say things like, why don't you just do the modern auction house? Well, anytime you say just, you're like, be careful there. Like, <laughs> so think about like yeah. knock-on effects. Like, you know, it's it's not it's not trivial, right? There's a lot of work involved in it and there's uh, not always all the effects that you imagine. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, the next thing I want to talk about, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, some some of these changes and stuff that have gone through, some things that you guys are looking at. And and like I said, I, I think the way that it's being approached is, is for the most part, really good. Um, in, in terms of accounting for the times and looking like, hey, how do we make this better for playing now based on like player behavior? Um, awesome, I'm glad you think so. Yeah, no, I actually, I actually think it's it's gone really well. Um, one of those things has been there's been a lot of talk about the dungeon finder. I, I think that's a very like divisive topic. It uh, is, and I and I think it's interesting because originally I think a lot of the people that wanted uh, classic WoW were that was one of the things that people would bring up pretty regularly is like this is not something that we want. Uh, you know, we don't like LFR, we don't like Dungeon Finder, but then now you have this thing where three years later, we're, we're here looking at Wrath, and then you, you have new players coming in, players who, I mean, 15 years ago, three years ago, was not 15 years ago now, you know? So then you have people that started playing in Wrath, and they're like, well, I always had this, what do you mean? 
So now you have this sort of weird thing. Has there been any thought of um, maybe not having the dungeon finder for max level, but having it for lower levels, uh, like doing up to level 60 content or maybe up to level 70 content to where uh, people can have a, a much easier time finding groups in the world as opposed to... Um, like at max level, you can sit in you can sit in like Dalaran or Shatrath. You can sit in trade chat and you can look for people. You know, there's the uh, there's the group finder system that you've added and that's that's great. But um, when you're a lower level, it's harder to just sit in one place and actively look to do a dungeon as opposed to queuing up. And uh, especially now that the game has kind of like moved on past vanilla, past Burning Crusade, is, is there been any consideration of that of just having a dungeon finder system for lower levels? We talk about lots of ways that we might make changes. And one of the things that we're worried about is uh, a lot of times if you do that for like one one segment of the, the population, yeah, it's you know, weird. The, the other is like, well, how come I don't get it, right? Like, we know you have the technology. Like, well, of course. And, and really, of course, we have the technology, right? We could, we could do this. Uh, and we're deciding not to. And it's really because we feel like those conversations and that, you know, community engagement uh, really is important. Like we really agree with that original classic philosophy. Yeah. But I will say there are voices on the team that you know don't always agree. We have uh, a conversation from diverse viewpoints where some people say like they actually want us to go all the way to Dungeon Finder, uh, and other people who say like, oh no, I actually want just this one little feature. And it's a a a, a conversation, an ongoing conversation about like what is the most appro appropriate way to go forward. Yeah. I think one of the things that uh, that has made us want to stay with not doing any of these things is because we want to make sure that the players who want that experience have a place where they can get it. And, you know, we sometimes hear that from people who want us to do a uh, random dungeon finder, you know, if they don't want it, why don't they just not use it? And it's like, you know that that's not really going to work, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> if, you, if you have it available, so many people will be using it because it's so convenient and, yeah. and you know, trivializing, right? That, that uh, there won't be, uh, it'll shrink the pool of people who aren't using it. And so you really need to have a protected ecosystem, yeah. right? Where this is the place where it doesn't exist. So there are people to find groups with and make organic groups with. In order to make an orga organic group space, you have to not have the option to just quick hit a button and just group with randoms. Right. And so that's that's one of the things that's really kind of holding us, uh, you know, making us want to have that that uh, efficiency. And I will say, like, I've personally had the experience leveling up where uh, I was happy because we had a conversation, because we weren't in an automatic group finder, yeah. that I invited a warrior who, in his mind, he was like, I'm joining this group as a DPS, right? And as we were, like, you know, forming the rest of the group, it was like, hey, would you mind tanking? He's like, I don't know. I haven't tanked in years, man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, but, you know, like we were all encouraging, we we're like, it's fine. Like, you know, we don't want to keep waiting and trying to find someone who's, you know, like, why don't you just switch? And he's like, well, OK, if everybody wants me to. And it kind of like gave him that safe space to say, like, I don't feel like I have to, like, you know, be at the top level. And honestly, he was great. Yeah. Right. But it just shows you that, like, sometimes there's this intimidation factor. If you're going into a random group, you don't know who these four people are going to be. And it might make you feel like I can't tank for this group because I'm going to get judged. But if you have a chance to talk to them first, you know, you can kind of establish yeah. a, a, a an idea of like, okay, what are we, what are all, all of our expectations yeah. and how can I make this work? Yeah, no, I, I love that actually. I, I'm a big fan of the, um, basically uh, any sort of like player interaction and social interaction. Um, the only concern is cause I, I, I personally was super against any sort of dungeon finder, raid finder, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, you know, just from streaming and kind of like listening to chat and kind of hearing other people's viewpoints, um, that's the one thing that kept coming up is like, we don't want it at oh, next yeah. level, but we want it at lower level because it's just so hard to find people for groups or you even have this problem now where I don't agree with this at all. People, people, <laughs> it, it, it is the way it is. People look at the game and they're like, I play this class or this person plays this class. They're not good for X, Y, and Z, which isn't even true. I mean, going into burning crusade, the amount of streams and videos and guides that I saw talking about how, Rogues aren't good. Warriors aren't good. And all of Burning Crusade, our top DPS was uh, a warrior, a rogue, uh, a mage, myself, just rotated, you know, based on whatever the fight was. Hunter at times. Like, it's just, it's it's way more balanced than people think the game is. But uh, I, I think at lower levels, there being something to where where people don't feel like they're, oh, I can't get into a group because I play a rogue. Or, you know, I'm just using rogue as an example. But um, I don't know. I don't know what the best solution for that would be. Um, I know what you mean. There, there, there is that kind of like sometimes stigma that comes from this kind of like cultural zitgeist around like what is the best class, and then people saying like everything else is garbage. And I, I don't know what to do about that. Like in terms of changing everybody's opinion, but I agree with you 
that yeah. the classes are a lot more balanced and there's a lot of like, you know, the, the class might not be the top, but they're still pretty close. Yeah. Especially with Wrath of the Lich King balance. They did mm-hmm. a pretty good job with Wrath of the Lich King uh, getting things pretty balanced. And so I feel like it's it's uh, it's worth everybody taking a second look and I hope they do. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I think I want to, um, I'll try and make these ones quick. H- has there been any discussion about like, uh, cross server grouping for arenas to, to kind yes, of, it's, okay. it's, it's the same thing as the other one where it's like, okay, well, if we did cross server grouping for arenas, how would we make that work? And then like, where would the line be that it doesn't go, go too far? Right. Like, of course, you get the pushback from like, if you can do that for arenas, why can't you do it for dungeons? But more than just like the why not me, there's also the like, OK, but how would you facilitate making the invitation in the first place? Do you say you can only invite your friends? Uh, if you did that, does that cause people to start to put people on their friends lists that aren't really their friends and like corrupt the friends list? Uh, if you could, you know, if you could do that, like like we did see this happen, like back when uh, we first allow- allowed uh, Battle Group Finding or excuse yeah. me. Well, that's what it turned into. Yeah. Battle.net friends lists, right? And then people would write mods that would like put people on your Battle.net friends list so that they could like group with you and like use that as a group finding tool. Yeah. And so we're really nervous about any kind of those, you know, unintended consequences, really. So that's what's kind of making us mm-hmm. not want to do that right now. And uh, and instead try to focus on like uh, locking the, the larger realms so that we can't have new people coming in. So yeah. that if you really want to play with a different group, you, you know, the people who are on those larger realms have to move off and to join the new people coming in on some other realm. And so yeah. we're trying to do that where we say there's a there's a point where like the realm size, we want to let people play where they want to play. But at a certain point, it goes beyond the point where it feels like classic. It goes beyond the point where our hardware can eventually handle it. And so or our software algorithms, too. Right. Yeah. Where there's just so many people that it does things like clog up the auction house or, you know, uh, pollute chat and things like that, make chat mm-hmm. too spammy. So there's there's a balance point where we want to try to pull things back. And, and we've reached that point on some of these realms where we say, okay, we have to lock character creation. We have to lock transfers in. We have to let pe- people come out. And uh, one of the kind of like, uh, I, I'm used by this, uh, I, I don't know if I want to bring it up, but I will, uh, is one thing I like about having these character uh, character creation and PCTs uh, locked into these realms is that it does mean that when we find the bots, we ban them and they can't come back. <laughs> so we are excited about that too. We've been able to be really effective with some recent new uh, bot banning techniques yeah. and they're extra effective on places where people can't make new characters. So we're excited about that. Yeah, well, that's, that's good at least, yeah. Um, yeah, and really that question comes from like the, the pressure in like the PvP community to, uh, I mean, I know, specifically yeah. it's like Alliance Benediction, Horde Fairlina, and you can see it in the team. So uh, there, there's definitely like some pressure there. Um, I get it. So, one thing I wanted to talk about as well is, uh, so Joyous Journeys has been a huge success. Uh, people people absolutely love it. I, I don't know how many people have said this is how the game, it feels like this is how the game is supposed to feel. Like, just leave it. Just leave this the whole time, uh, which I think is great. But um, in, 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 I mean, I actually agree with that, to be to be fair. But the uh, the heirlooms are added in Wrath. You, That's right. You have, you have heirlooms and That's- stuff added in Wrath. And in Wrath, I, I know one of the, one of the big things in, I, I think in the history of WoW, a lot of people see Wrath as like, you know, the beginning of the end. A lot of people say it like, you know, of, of the end of like classic WoW, and you start seeing some little things added, like the just the, the gear design, like how optimized the gear is, or heirlooms, it, you know, achievements are added, some stuff like that. Um, one of the problems I think with heirlooms that takes away from like that lower level experience, even if you're like leveling alts, is the the feeling of like going to do a dungeon and getting new gear and how special that feels right because if you call back and you think of, of legion right artif- people hated artifact weapons because it's it, the most exciting thing that you can possibly do in wow is get a new weapon like mm-hmm. loot, loot wise when you get a new weapon it's like boom it's a good day no matter what it's a good day if you got a new weapon so um is there any consideration of maybe changing heirlooms from armor pieces to something that's cosmetic like a shirt or a tabard and and maybe finding a way to uh, have players still have that experience of I'm gearing up my character I'm getting stronger I'm developing my character and uh, still getting that XP bonus and not feeling like you're you're gimping your leveling while you're uh, still having like the, you know that good feeling of getting new gear I know exactly what you mean and we did talk about that like heirlooms is one of those things that causes exactly that behavior that you're talking about of like feeling like oh i'm just going to equip this heirloom and now i'm done that whole slot it's going to scale with me as i level and i never need to pay attention to it the the heirloom is always going to be better Mm -hmm. and 
uh, we talked about whether or not we wanted to change that. And we were toying around with the idea of, of doing something there and decided not to partly because we were getting so many pushback uh, about some of our ideas for, for fixing some of these problems. And we said, you know, there's going to be people who really counted on heirlooms, really are looking forward to heirlooms and don't want us to mess with things. And if we mess with things here, is that going to like, you know, cause us to lose trust, lose the, the sense of what was cool about, you know, getting heirlooms, people thinking about like they're chasing heirlooms. Um, but you're right that I think that they, they could cause some problems. So I wouldn't say that we're not open to it. Uh, I think we're waiting to see if that's something that the community really demands. And if, you know, you feel I, I think like it'd it would be really popular. I, and other people are, I, yeah. I'd be interested in, in, in talking about that some more and trying to figure out like, is there something we could do that would change these in a way that people would feel was positive? Yeah, I, I think, I think that'd be fantastic. Um, I'll just throw out one idea that someone had. Someone was like, what if we just took literally all the stats off of them and they were just the XP bonus? And then you're like, oh, I want to wear like an XP bonus on my my gloves. And, well, you know, my, I, but I my think, boots are going to like extra straight. I'm just, that's just one idea. Yeah. I think, I think people would just feel like frustrated because they have to make a decision that they don't want to make there. Mm -hmm. I think if it, if heirlooms are changed to a cosmetic item, like a tabard or a shirt, and then they, they still have the feeling of gearing up, I, I think that would be gotcha. a home run. I, I, I like your idea there. Yeah. yeah. Like that's another, another way. Like th then there's not that choice. The, it's, it's a question of like what you're trying to capture because like so in some ways, like that choice of like, I want this thing or this thing is one of the things that makes yeah. the game interesting in terms of like loot that you're wearing. But I get your point that like the, I want to go fast versus I want to have any power at all is not quite the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting. I like your idea too, about like, what if they were in different slots where, you know, then they, are just an XP bonus. And then I, I, it doesn't take away from that mm -hmm. gear selection, like the upgrade feeling. Yeah, I, I think that'd be great. Thanks. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, I'd love that. Um, there is, I'm, I'm, I have so many things that I, I want to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't have more time for you. <laughs> it, it is all good. It is all good. Um, so there's heirlooms. Uh, so there's, okay, this is kind of moving on a, a little bit beyond Wrath of Lich King. Um, sure. I'm, I can talk less there, but we can try. You can ask if you want. Yeah. Well, um, it, it's kind of beyond and before, I guess, because okay. I'm, I'm a I'm a big <laughs> proponent of the provision of classic WoW. I I, I think that they like having the opportunity to play, always have the opportunity to play vanilla, and always having the opportunity to play Burning Crusade, and always having the opportunity to play Wrath of Lich King. Like those three expansions, is really important, and and I know that there's like a big audience of people that want to do that. And I think the popularity of, of Fresh, as we've seen with, you know, the, the Fresh server is just being completely flooded with, with people wanting to play that new, just, they want to reset and they want to try again, they want to play again. And this, this behavior is something that has been repeated for years prior to, to Classic launching on private servers. You know, new Fresh comes out, boom, everybody's playing the Fresh. And, you know, it's, you have the big hype and then it dies down. That's just, that's the nature of the games now. That's how it is. But um, is, there, is there any sort of, of plan, I guess, going forward, or is it a consideration that, this is something that we want to do, whether it's through Blizzard or I know with um, Holly was with, with was working on EverQuest at the time that Project 99 became a thing and having like mm -hmm. a, a third party, like not for profit managing it or anything like that. Like that might be something that's like a whole nother discussion. But uh, is there any consideration for having some way of, of having classic WoW provided in, in each one of those three forms like all the time? It is one of the things we're talking about because we do recognize that there are people who want that. And we definitely wanted to deliver that with Classic Era because that was what our original promise was, right? We want to bring Classic back. We're going to mm -hmm. have it for you. Uh, and then looking at it, we said, okay, well, if we're going to go to Burning Crusade, we definitely can't take away the thing we promised. So we were careful when we were announcing Burning Crusade, and maybe we could have been a little more explicit about saying it will move on if we move on. And so we are moving all of Burning Crusade to Wrath of the Lich King. I, right. and we have at this point, as right. I'm sure everybody knows, right? But we are cognizant of the fact that people are, you know, nostalgic now for Burning Crusade. They're like, yeah, yeah. I just had it. I really liked it. Burning Crusade was still cool, right? Like, could it ever come back again? And so we're aware of that, and we're talking about it and trying to figure out what the best options are. We don't feel like the idea of like splitting everybody and cloning everything into two places worked mm. out particularly well, but yeah. we'd like the opportunity of having like, oh, you could come back and do Burning Crusade again in the future. Yeah, like so, a new fresh we'll or keep, something. Yeah, we'll keep it in mind. And part of the, the, the trick about that is also like making sure that we, you know, juggle the number of on-ramps appropriately for players, right? Like there's a, a glut of choice right now. How do I want to play World of Warcraft? Do I want to play Modern? Do I want to play Wrath of the Lich King? Do I want to play Classic Era? Do I want to play Season of Mastery? Uh, you know, and then, so we want to make sure that we have uh, enough of a, like a, 
uh, understandable suite of things for people to choose from. They don't feel like they're burdened by the choice yeah. uh, and actually feel like they're excited by it. And so that's part of one of our considerations as well. And I mean, honestly, it's also it's convenient for us to not have so many things to juggle in our minds too. No, I I, I totally get it. Yeah, because it's, I mean, for for new players too, it can definitely be something that's that's tough to be like, which one do I play? Yeah. Like, what, 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 what am I gonna do? So right. I, and I, I, I mean, like, that. yeah, yeah, um, exactly. We, we want to make sure that 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 is something that is uh, that we improve from making easier for players to pick the one that they want. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I have, I guess, uh, I think we have time for one more. Um, I think last one, yeah. I got to run pretty quick, though. Okay. So um, I guess talking about the uh, the future, I guess, after Wrath, uh, is pretty much everything on the table now, like the, the opportunity to do Cataclysm for maybe like a changing the game, Wrath Plus, kind of similar to, to what you know, Old School RuneScape does with their polling system, is, is pretty much just completely wide open now, or uh, is there any sort of, um, uh, I, I guess, like specific direction that you see it going in? I think what we really want to do is we want to hear from people. It's reasonably wide open, I think, at this point. As you know, you know, we released the survey, but we want to make sure that uh, that we get that feedback early. So while we're still focused on making sure that we deliver like the next expansion packs, like uh, or excuse me, the next uh, uh, content drops, like yeah. Olduar and Trial of the Crusader and Ice Crown Citadel, right? <laughs> that we want to be having that conversation about like, well, what's going to come after that? And yeah. so we want that conversation to start so we kind of have that feeling from the community that we know that we're delivering something that people want. Uh, so what, no matter what it is, at least we're appealing to some audience that is asking for something for us. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a good way of looking at it, trying to find out what, what people want the most. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, Brian, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I think this yeah, is really cool. So much for having me. Yeah, I think, I think the, the chat loved it. I think people are going to love this, uh, getting to see this on YouTube or whatever after the fact. Um, I, 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 like I said, I wish we could talk some more. I know you got to go, but uh, I do. Yeah, I will. Um, I mean, I, I have your, I have your Twitter. I, I can DM you about stuff or, or whatever if you have some time. <laughs> I don't pay that much so. attention to it all the time, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I try to reply when I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, I'm the exact same way. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if I uh, uh, a little bit more about some of this other stuff. So, again, appreciate you so much coming on, and uh, uh, we'll see you later. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. We'll see you later. Bye. All right, dude. Uh, I think that was great. Chat, what did you guys think? He said, "Don't message me, bitch." <laughs> no, dude. I uh, yeah. Uh, I think he just wasn't trying to promise. Uh, trying to promise like quick response on stuff because uh, yeah. I think that was really really good. Summary recap for those of us tuning in. Uh, I wasn't listening. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so here's here's what we talked about. Uh, we talked about. Let me go through my my kind of notes here, and uh, kind of what we talked about. Um, again, that was Brian Birmingham, lead for Classic, and uh, he is he's he's been on the team since 2006. He uh, him and Omar were kind of like the two guys heading up Classic whenever whenever Classic Vanilla was coming out, and uh, you know he's still on the team huge uh you know these guys are spending a huge amount of time trying to make this thing right and uh i do think that overall they've, they've uh started doing like a better and better job as time's gone on to like adjust the game properly and make it work for uh the the time so uh yeah no i wasn't distracted by discord message i was looking at my notes so here's what we talked about um actually i'm gonna go ahead and stop recording because i'll post this on youtube Guys, if you guys like this, uh, I do all kinds of things all the time. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, chat, say bye, YouTube. And um, we'll see you guys next time.